Welcome back, everyone, to the Punk Rock Horror Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Cody. And today we're here to remind you, if you set your oven to 325 for 38 minutes, grab a dish and prep it with ham or any baking degreaser lubricant, then follow up with cookie dough, double stuffed Oreos, your choice of marshmallow fluff or Nutella. If you have a nut allergy, I recommend marshmallow fluff or just no filling. And then top it off with that with brownie mixture, Cook that son of a bitch for 38 minutes in that oven for 325. You have yourself a delicious dessert casserole, and that is the recipe I'm giving you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> now you can go back podcast where you can listen to some comedy, some horror, and get a good, uh, delicious cooking well, recipe. Straight up, man. I, uh, uh, coming to this recording, I actually did some... I, I was at my D&D group today, and we, you know, it was a potluck, and so I was like, okay, well, I can make my dessert casserole. And so, and it, I've made it for you too, for your like, yeah. you, like, I don't remember, I, I just know I made it for you guys too. I think it was Harrison's birthday. Your, no, no, maybe I did one for, I know I do it for only special occasions, so I maybe did it for once for Harrison's birthday too. <laughs> I was about to say, well, I guess it's not a special occasion. So, well, I, did, well, I, I only ever do it for special occasions, so yeah, except that one time me and our buddy Nick made like weed brownies for our friend Nate's wedding. Oh, yeah. That was actually really fucking funny. Like, we actually <laughs> talked about that recently. Just <laughs> that like, all way too funny. Dude, like, <laughs> like I'll tell you this right now. If you're going to make edible anything, like, there's way more work into it than people tell you. If you want to do it the right way, I know there's, like, a shit ton of other ways, but the way we did it, it took us, like, three hours just to get the, the butter for it. Yeah. Coming into it beforehand, I didn't know anything about it, so I was like, can't you just, like, throw the weed in mm-hmm. the brownie mixture? Mm-hmm. And my buddy Nick is like, well, yes, but you're not really going to get much of an effect from that and I'm like it was like here so we looked into the science and I read into it too and how we're gonna do it yeah. and so like like so we start at like midnight right <laughs> and so like we're straining this weed mm-hmm. to like because so you have to cook it in in a, in a slow cooker for like three hours man mm-hmm. um and so like then you have to strain it into a jar and let it sit overnight so we're just like breaking up all these little pieces of weed mm-hmm. and, and and there's a missing ingredient to that as well you have to like do it with butter actually an actual like couple sticks of butter too yeah and so like this weed that we got was like probably like 22 to 25 percent mm-hmm. for like each batch we had yeah and so so I kind of ended like if math serves right, it kind of ended up being a little bit more between fifty to seventy percent potency. Yeah. So like it was <laughs> it was high up there, man. So like me and Nick the whole time we're just like I don't know if we made enough. Like are we uh-huh. like is this actually gonna be strong enough? Are they even gonna feel anything? Because we were just worried that we made shitty tasting brownies. Yeah. You know, so we we put frosting on top just to be safe. You yeah. Know? Funny enough, me and Nick did never actually had a bite of it. I actually never got a bite either. Yeah. Well, and it's funny because like, you think we would have at least picked a bite. But no, like even even Lauren had one, and just like everybody just like had the best time of their life at that point. <laughs> like, like, and there's just you and Nick sitting in the background with your hair all crazy, like yeah, you enjoy well, those fucking well, we brownies. Were, <laughs> yeah, dude. We were, we were, and I, I felt like such an asshole too because what? So I, I was like, who's gonna put the brownies? And like Nick, and like everybody just kind of looked at me. He's like, well, you, you, you could do it. Nick's just like, you figure that out, Matt. Like didn't really say it. And I'm like, okay, I'll just figure it out. Like I know he didn't mean it that way either so i'm trying to figure out where to put these brownies you know for the wedding so i i asked nate i'm like hey man i know it's like your day i don't mean to like pull you away but where should i take these brownies and he's like oh you can take them up with the other baked goods i'm like okay but where should i take these brownies <laughs> like these aren't everybody brownies these are specifically for you and taylor and who you want to give them to yeah so and he's like what do you mean i'm like there's weed in the brownie <laughs> <laughs> to be like all right, man, I'm just going to spell it out for you. <laughs> so I walk up to the kitchen where, you know, their their wedding is, you know. And, yeah. And so I, he's like, oh, just go out there. Yeah, Taylor's friends who are, you know, are catering the event out there. They'll help you. And I'm like, okay, cool, man. Like, they, they'll be pretty friendly. Like, Taylor's really friendly. So I'm like, sure, they'll be really friendly. Yeah. Not realizing that I'm walking into, like, a hectic situation trying to ask them mm-hmm. where I, you know, as they're, like, getting food out, you mm-hmm. know, ask them, hey, where I sh- should I put this? And I was like, hey, are you so-and-so? Kit? I was told to bring these brownies here. And like, oh, yeah, you can kind of just put them wherever. And, mm-hmm. and you know, as, as long as they're on the way, I'm like, okay. But these are, I'm like, these are special brownies that we made specifically for Nate and Taylor. They're 18 and over brownies. <laughs> <laughs> like, there are, uh, it's because it's Colorado. There's 21 and over brownies. Yeah, like, the, you need 
to be legal to eat these. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, and so they kind of give me like this look, like you brought weed brownies, and I'm like, like I thought they, because keep in mind ADHD, so maybe I was processing the situation differently <laughs> than what it was, because it seemed like they got like frustrated with me that I brought weed brownies, and like, yeah. why would you bring that? And I'm like, oh, but it will get, but, like I don't mean to, that's why I want to put them separate so they don't get mixed with the other baked goods. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And so they're just. You're like looking at them like, yeah. I was, that's why I, I need I was a like, private area. I was like, do not dare judge me on this shit. I know, like, half of the people here brought fucking joints and weed. <laughs> so, so, so don't even give me that shit. Oh, no. See, that's when you also look at him and go, you're in the service industry? My best friend is in the service industry. I know what you people do behind closed doors. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, so, like, so I just put up the brownies and I just feel like such an asshole because I'm just, like, I have walked around this tray of, like, brownies <laughs> hoping brownies? that no kid comes up to me yeah, and so it's just, like, like... Is that brownies? Can you have one? <laughs> I'm just gonna be like, oh no, no, you can't. You gotta get. I'll probably say like, you need to get your parents' permission or something first. Uh, I just like and go, no, these are Satan brownies. <laughs> <laughs> make a possible small situation too worse. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, and it was just like, if I go back in time, I would actually try to eat one of the brownies I made because like it was so fucking funny when we were driving back down here from that wedding. You were driving and Lauren, she only had one brownie, and it just like knocked her out, man. And so like as we're driving. Up to Denny's because we all just got hungry from the long drive. Yeah, it was and, a long drive. Yes, Lauren, especially for obvious reasons. <laughs> like, she's, <laughs> she's passed out, and I'm just like, Lauren, Lauren, wake up. And you're like, Lauren, wake up. And like, everybody's trying to wake her up, and I, you just like, that's it. <laughs> and so, like, I could, I could feel. I could feel you think that because I knew the air was starting to thin because I turned and I remembered that there was a speed bump to this Denny's and I was like, oh no. <laughs> I was like, I see how we're going. Well, Lauren, I got a new alarm clock for you. And I was, I was, like, and I was already mapping out what's about to happen. I was like, oh no. I'm like, I'm like, she's laid down. I'm like, Lauren, and before I could even say her name again or turn around to say it, like, you just immediately hit that bump. And, like, <laughs> and she, like, lifts up into the air within the SUV. You can see her, like, from your rearview mirror, just, ah! <laughs> I was just, I heard, she's like, what the fuck? I was like, we're here. <laughs> yeah, she literally, like, flew up from the seat and fell down onto the floor of the car. Yeah. <laughs> I know, she was so mad. I was just like, we're here, Lauren. And she and just you know, looks so goes, Oh my god, what just happened? And you know what's so funny is that I could tell for a moment she was about to get pissed at me because it's something <laughs> I would do. And I knew that she was still trying to wake up remembering that you drove. <laughs> and I knew at the moment that she knew that she was going to yell at me, remember that you drove. And I was like, I'm not the one. <laughs> if you want to have this out with Cody, go ahead. <laughs> I didn't drive. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's the one that did it. I'm sorry, I'm laughing. <laughs> so that, that, was a, that, was a, that was a pretty good, like... Yeah, it, that was yeah. a nice little road trip. Yeah, I told Nick, I was like, maybe we should open up our own business. <laughs> so, like, like, I mean, uh, I'd buy them. Like, edible and forget or something. I edible don't know. and forget. <laughs> That's pretty good. So, yeah, uh, but... Talking about going back in time and whatnot, uh, let's jump into horror games. So we actually introed horror games uh, in our first Lovecraft episode. Um, the reason we haven't touched back on it is because our last few episodes didn't seem very appropriate for it, and also because we really wanted to focus on approaching both topics uh, appropriately. So since those were two subjects that we've never talked about, we wanted to just really focus on them and try to approach those topics with as the best like care and sensitivity that we could from our perspective. So that's why we didn't even do any of the games. Yeah. Keeping with the theme though, bringing back horror games. So I, I did this horror game with the band When Darkness Falls. That interview is coming out on the 18th here, so make sure you check it out. So uh, the game that we're doing today is What Would You Bring? If you've ever seen Army of Darkness, you know what it's about. Ash Williams being sucked into a portal from defeating the Necronomicon on this Deadite Horde being sucked into medieval times and then has to prove that he is this legend that he's not working with the occult that he's on man's side or humanity's side I should say by doing this he proves this by killing a deadite that is flying in the air um, with his boomstick so the question again that we're playing here's the challenge is our portal opens up sucks us into the vast void and uh -huh. we're sucked into medieval ages now of course we're not dressed how they'd be dressed so they're immediately <laughs> going to start thinking that we're working with the occult so we have to prove that we're not working with the occult by bringing one piece of technology modern technology which could be anything mm -hmm. 
but we need to be able to explain it without using the actual name of it. So, for yeah. example, if you wanted to bring an iPhone, you can't actually call it an iPhone. Yeah. But you have to explain how it works. Yeah. So they understand it. So that way they don't assume it's magic. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Cody, what, what is your piece of modern technology that you would bring? I'd take my bike. What, what would you call my it? My bicycle. I would just, I'd call it the iron horse. <laughs> 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 I'm like, this is my iron horse. It does not need to be fed. You don't have to pick up its poop. And it's powered by you. You can ride it anywhere as long as you got the right wheels. And they'll be like, oh, what are wheels? I'm like, what's that? I'm like, it's rubber. Do you want I me? can beat you with it. Here, I'll, 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 play, I'll play the part of the many people uh, okay. for you. So, okay. So, okay. so be like, be like, who are you and what is this contraption you bring with you? <laughs> Cody, and this is my iron horse. The horse of iron, I see no head for it. Where does it feed? Does it poo? You don't have to feed it, and, you, and it never poops. You never have to pick up after it. It does not shit itself. No. Nope. Well, then how does the beast move? These things that are <laughs> flat and connected to this metal rod, because you know what rods are, right? Yeah, you know what a rod is. Yes. So you put your foot, your feet on these two pet things. These are called pedals. You put them on there, Pedals, huh? and then you do one leg at a time, and it goes forward, like you walk. These do not look like the petals of a flower. Why would you call them such? It's because you pedal, man. I don't know. I, I, okay, these are now foot holders. Foot rests. Uh, there we go. Foot rests. <laughs> foot rests, and you push on them, and you go forward on the iron horse. So the beast, the machine, yes. propels itself via you? That seems counterproductive. Yes. Our and horses you, can move on their own. It, it, don't, it won't die. You'll never have to kill it. You won't have to worry about an enemy killing it. It goes on its own. It ne and you'll never have to worry about it running away because it literally can't move without you. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, all right, I like it. Yes. I like it. All right, uh, you want to know what mine would be? Yes, what is yours, so, Matt? So, uh, if you want... Oh, you, yeah. Do you, who are you and what is this contraption you have brought? I, I am the master of flame and ice. You know, the, fact, the sad thing is, is I could see you actually, like, panicking and starting to talk like that while I'm, I'm over there in the corner going, it's a bike! <laughs> I, I am the master of flame and ice. Bestow upon me your gaze as I blow your minds epically. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I would probably, like, start a fire, right? Like, and I would just, like... You know they'd probably attack you right then and there. And I'd just be like, wait! <laughs> Let me show you the wonders that I bring. <laughs> this contraption shall destroy any flame that dare thwart your kingdom and I shall show as such let the fire burn, let it rage and approach it with the ice of the gods <laughs> and I just take out a fire extinguisher <laughs> and just like put out the whole so, I'm just also thinking like okay, I can almost, you can almost see someone getting teleported with their bike cause like they're just biking along on the outside and stuff like that and it, who the fuck gets teleported with a fire Fire extinguisher, though. You know? <laughs> Being an Evil Dead fan has its pros. You know when it's gonna happen. Like you That's look at you look at. Well, I'm cues. also thinking like you know that person was in a panic already. So like if it was you, you'd be at work. The school is literally on fire. Yeah. And you're like, I gotta put it out to save little Timmy from the pottery shop. And then <laughs> you just get teleported while you're holding it. You're about to put it out, and all of a sudden it just nights, and you're like, Ha! This is not a fire. Or I, or also like. That idea of that I'm just in my kitchen because because <laughs> we have actually like a fire extinguisher under mm -hmm. the sink and I like the idea that I'm about to put out something that I tried to make that I thought was a good idea <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> and so I'd get sucked away that Lauren would have to literally deal with this fire <laughs> <laughs> Lauren's like what the fuck where's Matt <laughs> It's just this blue portal in the wall, and she's like, he would go in there and leave me to deal with this mess. <laughs> <laughs> of course, he has an excuse for everything. <laughs> Lauren, I got teleported in time and had to defeat the undead army. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so, uh, that that would be what I use to, to prove my worth. But nice. if, if it doesn't work out, we could always try to escape via... Bicycle you. and fire extinguisher yeah, I'll just be, I'll just be on the back of it with, like, a fire extinguisher. <laughs> Be like, be like, scatter, smoke screen. <laughs> <laughs> 
run! <laughs> and because, like, it's actually really cold, they, they would get hit by it and think that they are start to die. Like, they're going to die. Yeah, they lick the like, ice! Like, ah, oh, the god's ice <laughs> breath is burning my flesh! He's a witch! <laughs> so it would probably just work against us in the end. Probably. I don't know. I think we'd make it with the metal horse. Yeah. <laughs> Our iron horse. <laughs> the history books. The great iron horse and wizard of a fire and ice here yes. decided to try and leg it. <laughs> and they try to like, like actual anthropologists would try to like figure it out and whatnot and be like, like so they probably created the smoke screen with a mixture of gunpowder and some cloth. And it looks like they made that bike from like actual blacksmithing rods together. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know how they became the wheel. There was no rubber back then. How did they get the rubber wheels? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, that, that that would be what we do. So that that's called What You Would Bring. I had fun with uh, playing with When Darkness Falls. <laughs> so, uh, check, check that out. Like Again, that yeah, that episode will be out April, or not April, July 18th. <laughs> in so. April, we're going back in time to April now. <laughs> it's, it's good. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> it, just keep it with the theme. And basically. <laughs> um, but, you know, man, uh, the other thing I want to kind of just talk about and go into is something we love and hate. So yeah. this is a segment of the show that if you're new to the show somehow, to let you know what it is, we just talk about something in the past day, week, or month that has happened in the world around us and that we want to give our own perspective on. It could be anything that's happening in mainstream media news to even just small little insists that mm -hmm. happen to us as we're working or walking about doing our errands. So we're going to change it up a little bit and actually just take turns talking about the things we hate and then both finish on the things that we love. Yes. So jumping into it, buddy. Do yeah. You go ahead and start us off. So I'm going to start off with the thing I hate is right now in the world, like I know we try and stay away from politics as much as we can and I of course of course we know we have definitely broken that rule when we got too super heated about things but the thing for me right now man is like I hate the lack of empathy that is here in the U.S. and yeah. just the lack of empathy we have for each other and for these movements and for the fact that there's a fucking pandemic in this world and that as a nation we can't just say all right, we'll wear a mask to make sure we can get through this and everything. We'll listen to the people who've spent their entire fucking lives educating themselves, like virologists, epidologists, and I think I said it right, I don't know, but like, you know what I mean? Like all yeah. those scientists, the actual scientists who spent their entire fucking lives on like researching and learning about diseases and disease control and pre health prevention and all of that. And they can say, hey, everyone, we need you to wear masks when you're outside and in public and try and stay away from each other as much as possible for these few months so we can get through this and get to a point where we can be all, where we can go back to normal lives. Mm -hmm. And know what we do? We say, go fuck yourselves. It's a conspiracy to control us and blah, 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 blah. And go fuck. How about you shut the shut the fuck up and just wear the mask it's not for you it's for everyone else it's to help everyone else you might not get, have the disease but you don't even know if you have it or not because it is shown that you can carry the fucking disease just like any other disease you can carry it without showing any kind of types of symptoms so for once in your goddamn pathetic fucking life just wear the mask and think yeah. about someone else for once. And the, the reason why I'm so heated about this and the reason why I say the lack of empathy isn't just because of all the stupid posts that I see on Facebook and stuff from people who I thought were smart enough and stuff like that, who I used to respect and stuff till I started seeing some of this stuff, mm -hmm. uh, how they have no care for anyone else's life and it's just a conspiracy. No. Like, seeing all of that and then what I had to deal with at work this weekend. I work in a senior living center and fucking we had a band that wasn't even scheduled to come. They just showed up there, brought their own posse and had people dancing around with like the residents and stuff without their masks right. and getting up close into them, not practicing social distancing at a place that is literally filled with the people that could die from this disease. Right. The ones that we are supposed to be trying to protect and the lack of fucking empathy just because people are so done with this disease and would think that if I just ignore it, it's going to go away. No, it's, that's not how it fucking works. Like seriously, just wear your mask, be smart, wash your hands. Don't go out in public all the freaking time. Like think about someone else for once in your life. Come on, just wear the mask for a few months and we'll be over it. We'll get through it because we are at the point. We're so close to the point of no return with this disease here in America that we're just going to have to go. You know what? I guess we're just going to live with it now and it's going to kill so many people just because we wanted a haircut. Yeah. Like 
that is disgusting. And if any anyone think who thinks that trying to get or their haircut is more important than that person cutting the hair's life or their family's life is less than important than you getting your fucking fade, like you need to rethink about your own life and fucking think about someone else. Right. Like rethink about you what your morals are. It's gross. The, you know, it's the, even the biggest thing that I haven't seen anyone try and use in arguments against this disease. I and mean, I know they're out there, but I haven't seen anyone try to bring Christianity or any type of religion into it because religions would say you need to think about someone else. Turn the other cheek. Think about someone else. Just wear the mask, man. Like, come on. It's a two-second mm -hmm. thing to do. And, oh, my God, you have times where you can take your off your mask and stuff like that. It's not like you have to wear it to sleep and wear it everywhere constantly 24-7. It's just when you're in public, wear your mask. When you're outside, wear your mask. When you're going to be around other people that you haven't been around already, wear your mask. Like, come on. It's not that fucking hard. Get over yourself. Yeah. Anyways. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean... That's the thing I hate is just the lack of empathy, man. Just come on. The CDC is not out to get us. That's what their fucking jobs are is to help us get better. Come on. Right. No, I, I feel you, man. I mean, so, they, and what I want to kind of also add on that, too, is like a lot of these people tend to also be, I feel like, the anti-vaxxers. Well, I, guess what, man? If you hate vaccines that much, you know what's going to happen if we don't do our part to like really lessen the effect of this outbreak and you get infected? Guess what you're going to have to do regardless? Get a vaccine. If there's even one by then. Yeah. So, I mean, point being, yeah. though, is that the lack of empathy is just so apparent across the board that it's being confused for human decency, for your own personal beliefs mm -hmm. and rights, and what you want to do, and that you feel that your rights are being taken away because of lizard men and the Freemasons. I know, or and the, the whole, like, don't impede on my rights, making me wear a mask goes against my rights. It's like, if you wore the mask in the beginning, right. it wouldn't be this kind of, this bad right now. So, and if we're talking about the rights that are being impeded on, what I yeah. want to touch on, I'm, I'm going to try to check some privileges here. So, uh, I mentioned it before in our Moment of Silence episode that I am biracial, I am Latin, but also I am Native American. Where I'm about to speak from is just myself. I don't speak for all Native or Indigenous people, but I am just trying to be a spotlight for the moment, so just you know, bear with me, and I am going to try to articulate what I want to say as best I can, so please be patient with me, everybody, if I stutter. But at the time of this recording, depending on what you're listening, this past weekend on 4th of July, you know, 4th of July 2020, if anybody's just, like, listening to us, like, years ahead or whatever, <laughs> there's an incident. At the foot of Mount Rushmore, on the eve of Independence Day, our President Donald Trump made a direct appeal to disinfected uh, white voters four months before Election Day, accusing protesters who have pushed racial justice of engaging in merciless campaign to wipe out our history. That's a quote from an article from abc7.com. Uh, By the way, this is the resource I'm reading from, but there are a lot of other news outlets that have reported on this, so just if you don't like where I'm reading from, I suggest you go to one that you trust more and get a, bit, a little bit more involved with that and more informed. But going into this, his motivation was to go see fireworks be lit off, right? Mm -hmm. But where he wanted to go was on sacred ground for the Lakota people. So he wanted to basically go to Black Hill. And Black Hill was, without getting too much into the history, but, but just to sum it up appropriately, Black Hill was a victory for the Lakota way back in the 1700s. I think it was 1773 or 75. I could be mistaken, so I do apologize. You know, it, during the war back then, and they, they you know fought for the land to keep the rights to the land, and they continually fought throughout ages with the U.S. government of who has the right to that land. Yeah. And so so with treaties being made to respect, you know, the Lakota people, President Trump wanted to go basically against the treaty just to watch fireworks. Yeah. Now, keep in mind, I'm summarizing a lot of this up. So there's more details to this that do matter. So I, yeah. I recommend that you do read articles about this, everybody, and get yourself informed. But uh, basically... A lot of beautiful, amazing, brave Native people and Indigenous people alike came together to protest and block off not just Trump, but groups of supporters mm -hmm. that he wanted to, you know, encourage to come and just watch fireworks. Because yeah. everybody lined up to see him, and no, only few were wearing masks. Yeah. So, th so yeah, here, hold on, hold on. No, I so, don't. coming into the lack of empathy. So, one, obviously not caring for, you know, Native people and their culture, especially Lakota in this instance, but also, you know, they were made 
making the point, the protesters making the point that they have a lot of people who are at risk. Yeah. So bringing that many people who aren't, you know, respecting the COVID guidelines does put them at risk for getting sick and getting, you know, severely, severely hurt. And so here's my frustration, man, is this. A lot of cases on reservations when a native family has a home, uh, this isn't everywhere, but this is for the most part what, what you will see if you look into it and do some research. Um, worst case scenarios, you will, you will have a family who has a home and that's it. They don't have any running electricity, no yeah. running water. Um, nearest hospital is at least, at the minimum, like an hour out, if not longer. And if you basically get bitten by like a poisonous spider or snake, you're pretty much screwed for the most part. Yeah. They rely on gas lamps to just be able to go outside and poop in the middle of the night, yeah. which is very dangerous, again, because no electricity, there is no light in general yeah. at that, besides what they have available to them. They get no aid and are constantly ignored, and those rights are being constantly violated. Yep. And then when you have Karen, who is complaining about wearing a mask saying that's taken a right. I need is, my hair cut. Yeah, it's so frustrating because it's like all the energy that everybody puts into trying to figure out if this is a conspiracy theory to control us with COVID. Right. You would think would be better put to actually fighting for people who are native and are struggling or for the Black Lives Matter movement or anything right now that is in equal or injustice, you would think that these people would put more support into that because racism in general shouldn't be an argument. But the no. fact that President Trump did not care, did not care about the cultural significance, did not care what it meant or what it stood for, and only wanted to do it because he wanted to do it. And didn't it's, care about the actual fucking treaty. And so one thing Legal I want... Legal binding treaty. And so one thing I really want to point out to this too is that these protesters who were peacefully protesting, not throwing anything, not causing any, you know, any sort of violence they called in the national guard fully armored up and pepper sprayed a lot of these protesters 15 were arrested and the sick thing about it man is that some of these protesters uh, some of these beautiful brave native people indigenous people were 10 years old yeah kids like kids learn just wanting to respect their culture and learn about their culture and learn about like their way of life and everything and have a better life are getting pepper sprayed because some fucking plastic muppet wants to watch goddamn fireworks where he could have done anywhere. So one thing, and I, I want to finish on this really quick. So uh, from the article as well, from the from the report, um, more than 100 protesters, many Lakota, lined the road leading from Keystone to the monument, holding signs and playing Lakota music in 95 degree heat. Some held their fists in the air as cars loaded with event attendees passed by. Others held signs that read, protect Sodak's first people. You are on stolen land and dismantle white supremacy so that last sign I know triggers a lot of people if you're on the wrong side of history and let me point out something they are responding with this sign with this message because their rights are being violated because their culture because. is being attacked you know and also I want to point out that it wasn't just Lakota there are also a lot of other tribes that did join for this too one is Ihe Kaho Waste a spiritual leader of the Oglala Sayo tribe, which again, I do apologize everybody, I'm not purposely trying to mess up any of these words, it's just my stutter. And the fact that about 15 protesters were arrested after blocking a road and missing a, a police imposed deadline to leave is such a huge sign of why the system we live within is so broken. And honestly, I, I just, I can't believe it. Like, I can't believe that, you know, this has gone this far. I mean, again, you know, even, even Trump's kid, uh, Trump Jr. and his wife were, you know, found to have been positive with COVID and have mm -hmm. stayed inside and haven't done anything and canceled all their events. And you know what, man? The lack of empathy is so frustrating that we need to just remember that when you say all lives matter, there's a, the stigma that was attached to that is to just silence when lives that aren't being accounted for, that do matter, are being attacked, aren't being counted for. You know, I do want to end, we want to go to something we love and hate, but just because I need to also check myself and call myself out really fast, I'm sorry, yeah. man. No, you're good. Um, is that when Black Lives Matter did start, I was originally one of the people saying all lives matter. Oh, yeah, same And here. I lost some friendships because at that time, I was ignorant to the stigma of what all lives matter was and what it stood for. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand it because I legitimately thought it was just what we're saying that all lives do matter so black lives also matter yeah and i misunderstood that man and i'm and i'm totally calling myself out here and mm -hmm. to anyone that i did who happened to offend back then with my words i sincerely sincerely do apologize i i really do mean that 
because it took me a minute to realize that when we're saying all lives matter is that all lives have been mattering and mm-hmm. we have taken into the account that they do matter. But it is clear and it's obvious through my own research and teaching myself that, you know, that's not the case because er- there are so many groups of people that are being marginalized and being hurt. And again, what happened to Black Hill is not going to be talked about more than likely. It's going to be forgotten about and I hope it doesn't. Mm-hmm. I really do hope that. But that's another case where uh, this all lives matters can just be shoved up the ass of every ignorant person and I'm willing to even throw myself in that group yeah. just because I was uh, once that ignorant also so everybody let's just jump into something we love and then jump into some movie reviews yeah um, the thing I love this week we don't celebrate 4th of July so I just call it like family day so for family day me and uh, Aaron went to hang out with our friend Jenna to so just like light up fireworks mm-hmm. and so me and Aaron had this small moment where she was actually held, held a sparkler for the first time and it was really sweet because she was originally scared of fireworks and like the noise scared her and it was kind of hard to get her to come out and to just like say you know it's okay like you know you gotta start somewhere you should yeah. enjoy the fun and so we we worked on it we i got her out of the house and she you know finally lit her first sparkler and just like seeing the light up in her eyes as she's like making just small circles keep in mind she's like wearing a leather garden yeah. glove obviously so you know just making yeah. like small circles with the sparkler and just that joy it brought to her mm-hmm. like made me so happy because like she's like can i light off another one can i do another one and i'm like just hold on <laughs> <laughs> and so it was just it was just it was like a small precious moment i had amidst the sea of constant chaos that we're having to live within yeah so it, i just loved it man uh, what, what do you love for me it's this past weekend like i didn't really do anything for the fourth or anything mostly because like there's a fucking pandemic going on. I'm not going to risk going out and stuff like that, even for the fourth. Like, I didn't do it for any any other super special occasion. Like, I'm not going to go out and even for the fourth, especially with, like, what every all the chaos that's going around. So I stayed in. And one thing that I've been really trying to do lately is get more into things that Dev likes. You know, as much as I do love the fact that me and her are content and comfortable at doing our own little things, even as long as we're enjoying each other's company, I've been really wanting to find something for us to do. And so we made an agreement that she'll watch all the Star Wars movies with me as long as I watch the Twilight movies with her. Uh, We just started watching the Twilight movies this weekend just because they're shorter than the Star Wars movies. (laughs) And, uh... Yeah, and I just think it's. I, I feel like it's fair. She's gonna. She's been having to watch a lot of horror movies with me and whatnot, and she's not huge into horror. But like, I figured it'd be fair to start off with her side, and so and also for her, like, I invested myself in the story and in the story arcs of the whole Twilight series. And even though I kind of know about it, and I really, you know, we shit on it so much on this podcast. I did it for her, and honestly, like, I'm really enjoying. I'm actually enjoying the movies, but it's mostly because I'm enjoying because I'm doing something with Dev, and that's something that I really love is the fact that like we found something that she really 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 likes and that she's really into and i can put aside my own shit so i can enjoy something with her and that's for her and like that's just something that i really love that i was able to do this weekend is just put it put all the craziness aside and enjoy something that she loves so yeah yeah. you gotta love those small moments man yeah um and to keep a healthy relationship man you gotta you gotta get into the things that they like even if you hated it before because what's the thing we're talking about getting with the seats compromise compromise (laughs) so so yeah all right so after we got talked about some really hateful things and you know some small moments that really matter in in lives and those are things you got to hold on to let's talk about some movies yeah let's jump into the meat of it everybody so this is now the point where we're going to make case for two horror movies that we picked this week that are relation to our monday or our tuesday themed episode Mm -hmm. that uh we feel have you (laughs) we had them on monday for so long and then the apocalypse yeah (laughs) now we're now we're just releasing them on tuesday it's not going to use that but these movies we feel were either overlooked or underappreciated or didn't just get enough attention and Mm -hmm. we're going to make the case as for why you should watch them we're going to point out the pros and cons but keep in mind we're making the case for these movies so we ask that you enter these reviews with an open mind way uh, willing to hear about a new horror film that you might actually enjoy you never know as you all remember from our tuesday episode we were talking about streaming services and how the streaming industry has helped like either hampered or helped horror especially in the independent scene and stuff like that we decided to pick streaming service exclusive movies. So like your Netflix exclusive feature or your Hulu Into the Dark exclusive feature, Shutter exclusive, stuff like that. Yeah. So 
Yeah. But, and to be fair, we picked our movies from... I picked mine from Shudder, and Cody picked his from Netflix. The reason I we do did, a lot of Netflix. Well, and the reason <laughs> it's up to mine, we're talking about exclusives. So, yeah. like, Amazon's not going to qualify because you can rent any horror movies from them, and they mm-hmm. don't really have a huge horror selection that is exclusively under Prime itself. Yeah. Uh, like, that wasn't, you know, recently published under another streaming service or what have you. Yeah. Whereas Shudder itself is technically a streaming service only for horror, although it is an add-on to Amazon Prime by that technicality it does yeah. count so like we're not going to like review anything from like Tubi or anything else these are yeah. exclusive so it kind of goes against what we normally do because you had to have a subscription to check these out yeah but we kind of figured you know also with all the craziness and everybody having to be cooped up inside and stuff like that I'm sure a lot of subscription services popped up plus we're in the day and age of streaming anyways Yeah. And, like almost everyone has some subscription service so we just thought we'd give you a movie from two of our favorites yeah and truly the reason that Netflix made the cut is because they do generally have more exclusive content, especially horror content. Yeah, they've really. upped their game in their horror content. Um, except for Eli, that wouldn't go fuck itself. <laughs> Look, man, I watched Eli too late at the end of the year last year. I'm going to use as much, as many times as I can shit on it for the rest of 2020, I will. All right. Good to know. <laughs> last week, uh, last time I did Stranger by the Lake and you did The Perfection. Yep. Um, and you finished. Which was a Netflix original also. Go figure. Dude, I do a lot of Netflix originals on this mo- on this show. <laughs> you got you to change it up. I, I do. Or Netflix just needs to sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we could always re- reach out to them and see if they'll do a show. That's I, true. I could be like, hey, do you want to do a podcast for a show? Like, you can come hang out with us. Like, Cody does basically just you guys. We're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're kind of funny. <laughs> I mean, I think we're funny. But <laughs> I, 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 You know, man, I keep thinking, sorry, I'm going to let you go, but I keep thinking about like that one time that like I made such a huge ass out of myself. <laughs> like, which time? Which, so I think it was the first time we hung out with, cons- did it. with Conspiracy Theater. Oh, well, see, I thought I was the asshole then. No, it was, it was afterwards because I was talking to Olivia Olivia Schilling by the way check her out she's she's a comedian here in Colorado she's hilarious and yeah, she's to- funny. totally worth your time uh, she's awesome and so I was having a conversation with her and I was and I was having trouble hearing but I thought she was talking about uh, the surrealness of like being called funny and being told that you're funny yeah and so like I was just trying to like relate in the conversation and <laughs> and I didn't process that appropriately not realizing that she was only just trying to talk about herself and her experience yeah and I did not mean to make myself about it where I was like <laughs> yeah that's where we told you funny huh <laughs> <laughs> you're like, yeah, this is, this is crazy, right? Me. So, so I'm like, I'm, so I think about it. I'm like, she's probably made a set about me. I deserve it. <laughs> but no, I, I, I just like, I, but it, it is kind of one of those things where it's like, can we even say that we're really funny? And then uh, I, I it, it makes me feel better when you say it because I'm like, okay, I'm just stuck in my head too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. Yeah, I think we're funny. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, shout out to Olivia hey, Schilling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. So let's get to our movie reviews. What did you do, Cody? I did my movie review on Eli. No, I'm, I'm, I'm like, and podcast over. You, um, Cody has oblivion, to the oblivion, have fucked himself, and I am uh, done. No, um, I did my, I've been actually really curious about this, so like, even though I do a lot of, I think the reason why I do a lot of Netflix originals on our podcast is mostly because for a long time I've been wanting to watch these movies, but then I'm like, yeah. it's a Netflix original, it's gonna be on here forever, I'm gonna go watch something that's gonna be taken off in like a month or two. And so I really, I almost did The Ritual, but I know that's slowly becoming more popular and more well known that, than I thought. Yeah. Um, that's It's been out a little bit more. Um, so I decided to do Netflix original Ravenous, also called Le Affamé. It is a Canadian movie synopsis in a small remote village in northern quebec things have changed locals are not the same anymore their bodies are breaking down and they have turned against their loved ones a handful of survivors go hiding in the woods looking for others like them i didn't know this was a movie about florida but yeah. about, uh, <laughs> uh, ooh, um the just bodies love you, breaking, florida. just kidding their bodies are breaking down that is not right and turn against their loved ones you have no fucking idea like that is not that's that's a terrible that's terrible You're IMDb. Upset. Come on, man. Make it um, it's directed by Robin Albert, written by Robin Albert, stars Mark Andre Godin, Monia Chokri, and Charlotte St. Martin. I, you know, honestly, this movie started off really fucking good. <laughs> like, I enjoyed the opening. It was super freaking creepy because how it starts off is that you just see a chair in this fog. 
and the fog's like going around and you start so- somewhat you can kind of see silhouettes yeah. and I, they, they do it on purpose where it's really really cool because you have to like really look into the fog i actually rewound it so i could re- just to make sure i was seeing like i knew what i was seeing and then it just starts off fucking hard where like you're at this racetrack and it's like those cars are going ac- along like crazy like, and you see like this, a nascar racetrack or one of those uh, box car i would say box okay. car more likely okay but i mean it's i guess like, it doesn't matter you've seen one you've seen them all yeah it's yeah basically it's like <laughs> they're taking another left turn <laughs> and so they're at this racetrack and you see this race car driver making out with his girlfriend and so you're like oh okay you know probably the zombie hordes are gonna like swarm over because like it's a zombie movie yeah. um but um but instead they kind of like they stop making out and they just see this girl standing there and they're like they look at her and they see like blood kind of coming down her mouth so like as a viewer like oh shit something's gonna happen it's gonna go down and, and like you don't really expect but he just goes are you okay and this little girl just fucking books it towards them and then it, like it flashes to somewhere else real fast oh yeah it flashes to other zombies starting to run and then it comes back to her and you just see the little girl ripping the chick's neck out with her mouth like and the dude's like screaming help 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 and then it flashes like forward and so like i thought that was a really solid opening and i know i'm normally against flash forwards in time and stuff like that because i i I hate when you have to piece together everything but what one of my biggest pros about this movie is they built a lot of the character development and like their backstories like yes several of the characters do go into their backstory and stuff like that and talk about themselves in the back um about the before time like when before the apocalypse happened and stuff but they tell a lot of it in just the background kind of like dark souls e where you have to like look yeah. around the environment to like get the story and stuff or like a quiet place for in movies how like they tell the stories of the aliens through everything in the background and newspaper clippings that you have to like pause the movie to read they kind of do this in this movie and it's really really good because like it starts off with this boy letting his horse go and then he walks away and you just see two more than likely his parents laying in this field with shots to the back of their heads yeah and he already kind of has blood on him and he walks away and then you just see these two guys cracking jokes while they're burning these bodies of zombie you know zombie bodies and so like you kind of get introduced to everyone and how they're all separate stories and so you're like oh, okay so they're going to combine stories at some point this is where the world building really really lets off and how it hits you so you see this lady she just pulls up into in front of this like convenience store and she opens her door and starts playing music and she already kind of looks a little messed up and she's crying like she can tell she's upset she has this big ass fucking machete next to her and so you see the zombie behind the car because she opens the door and starts playing music so it can hear it and it comes up and she just goes to fucking town on this zombie and just chops him up but what you don't notice because you're too focused on her and then on the zombie is you see an empty car seat in the back of her car so she had a baby but there's no baby and so you see you can tell from her mental anguish she lost her family and so that's where all this pent-up frustration came from but you don't know how she lost him or why she lost him or anything and so i thought that was really cool and then the other thing that i really liked about this movie is they turn the zombie trope on its head a little bit because they make the zombies smart they actually set traps and shit like that and i was like holy fuck because there's this forest scene where the two guys that were burning the bodies like they're uh one of them's always cracking jokes he's like he's telling really dirty jokes and stupid jokes and then the other one like you end up learning his backstory and it's really really disheartening one of them sees a family that his kids used to know and so he has to go see on them and his buddy's like telling him no 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 don't go and so he starts walking into the forest given also this movie has like little to no music and it's really eerie and it works really well because what happens is he goes up to these to this mom and her kid mm-hmm. and so he looks to them and then when he gets to a certain distance away from him he kind of like looks into the forest and his buddies tell him like dude leave him alone leave this alone this isn't good and he look, walks more into the forest and then he sees a kid hiding in the trees but it's not a fucking kid it's a zombie hiding in the trees and then he turns and looks and there's the mom like the mother zombie smiling like what? the zombies have emotion in this one it fucked me up when this happened because then like of course like the guy gets eaten or he gets attacked and so like it was just like what the shit because right after he gets attacked his buddy comes in and is like trying to save him or no sorry he gets attacked and then he like run makes it back to the truck 
And so, but they look into the forest and you just see a horde of zombies standing and watching them right before they book it after them, after like this whole trap went down. And I was like, oh my God. So that was one of the, like that, that intensity and that scene with the quietness and then seeing the zombies actually be smart and stuff like that. Yeah. It goes throughout like the entire movie. Like it's really cool that to see that they kind of turn the zombies on their head because they're not really like zombie zombies, I guess. I don't know. Like I said, there's a lot I don't know about this movie, too. But then it leads into, like, the same kid that we saw earlier, and he finds this old man. And so you actually see this the old man in the very beginning. He's just running, and there's these three zombies chasing him. And so, but when you get back to him, you just see him standing over his, this dead old lady, and then these two zombies are ch- about to attack him, and he's just kind of accepted his fate, and they get domed. And so then you hear about how his whole story about, like, what these people meant to the old man because he ends up telling the kid from the beginning, he, he ends up running into that kid and tells him his story. And the kid never tells his story. This kid never opens his mouth throughout the whole movie until a certain part. It's really good. Because that's when it like breaks your heart. <laughs> it was just, uh, they did such a good job with it. So after that, it starts having kind of like a city, Land of the Dead. Yeah, Land of the Dead, George A. Romero's the one with uh, John Leguizamo feeling of it where the zombies kind of like they hang out in their old places and familiar places in this movie so like you'll see an old man literally at his house playing with his dog but he's a zombie and it's like really cool like seeing them have like more character development with the zombies also one another pro i have for this movie is some of the intense scenes that they have are fake outs and they do the fake out intense scenes really really well like there's this scene where two of the main characters they're walking through this abandoned building and they're trying to find something and it builds up this super intensity and super craziness because there's just like everything else you think the zombies are planning a trap but in reality they end up finding a new survivor and like she becomes part of their group but the entire scene up until they find her is just developed so well and there's like the intensity of it's so well done you don't know if they're gonna find an actual person or if they're gonna find a zombie or if they're gonna find refuge like what they're gonna get and so they, this movie does a really good job of building up the intensity and the scariness and the creepiness and then give you a sense of satisfaction when the good parts do happen so like you feel great when the nice things do happen in this movie and the thing i like about this movie too is that since it flashes forward it actually shows these characters are smart and they're yeah. not scared and that they actually develop a system. So there's uh, these two old, so the lady you see in the beginning, that ha- the mom, I'm just gonna call her the mom. So after her, you, she ends up finding this like little refuge with these two older gals. And like, they see how distraught she is, but they hold their guns on her and they're like, you got to strip if you're going to stay. And she like, you know, she has that look of like, what the fuck? And they're like, no, we got to check you for bites. And so they check her for bites and everything. They make her strip and check her for bites. And they're like, you can stay. <laughs> and, like, and I like that because in most places they're like, have you been bitten? No. Okay, you're good. No, nah, yeah. this one they actually look. And the people set traps to make sure they know that the zombies are coming. Like they put out a shit ton of like mouse traps around the property so they can hear the zombies coming with, like, with the mouse traps. Where it starts alluding to where they're not quite zombies is that there's a scene where they're in this giant field and you see a giant chair altar and all the zombies are bringing these chairs to this altar and they're stacking it on top of it. And like, you never find out what's up with that. <laughs> like, and I'm a little upset because I feel like that would be something really cool like to go into, like to explain the pandemic. But at the same time, I like that they didn't really go into it because it's like, no, you're following around just a group of survivors. They're not going to fucking find out what's going on. Like, that's not their goal. They're just trying to survive. So, of course, you're not going to figure out, find out, like, where this started, how this started, and stuff like that in this movie, because that's not what it's about. It's about the relationship between all these people and surviving this apocalypse and trying to get through and, like, and just seeing how they survive. I will say, so for everyone listening also, it is foreign it's a french canadian movie so they're all speaking french so you are gonna have there are subtitles and stuff like that but honestly it doesn't hurt the movie uh, mostly because like there's a decent amount of talking but like there isn't a whole lot of talking and also like i said a lot of the world building and the and the everything in this movie happens in the background and happens with their interactions with each other more than what they say to each other and how they interact with each other and then the zombie and, uh, and the zombies and new areas and trying to find areas and it's re- done really really well and there's such good chemistry between all the actors in this movie yeah and so i'm going to throw in a little quick little spoiler here uh it's about a 30 second spoiler about the ending of the movie three two one 
Okay, so the ending of the movie, everyone except the little girl is dead. And so then she gets to this route, and they, at one point in the movie, they find, like, this abandoned cabin. They see a note saying this guy says, like, he patrols Route 113 trying to search for survivors. So she ends up getting there, and it turns out to be the race car driver from the very beginning. He survived. And so he picks her up, and he's driving her off, and she goes off with him. Well, just before she meets him, yeah. you see another altar, just like the chairs, but it's all kids' toys. And so how the movie ends is that, like, they're driving off, and she starts smiling. And so, like, that's how it ends. And, like, it ends in a way where, like, you... It's very open-ended, and I like those open-ended. Yeah. You know, because it was almost like a twist that kind of just came out of left field that had no lead-up to it, no real... Like, I mean, there were a couple instances where it might it might have hinted to what it meant, but to me, I felt like it just kind of... It was almost unnecessary. Like, they almost wanted it to be super okay. ominous and super creepy into the fact of, like, oh, maybe... Like, this per maybe, maybe this person's evil or maybe not. And it's like, I could have done without that. <laughs> like, mostly because, like, I feel like it tainted, like, what potentially could have been a new relationship between the survivors. Yeah. And, like, just because of, like, oh, he's one of them evil. And I was like, eh. So, except for that. Like, that's my biggest con. A couple other cons that I have is, like, I will say the pacing can be a little slow. There were a few points where, like, I, it was supposed to be intense and creepy, but because there was no music or anything, it almost came off a little boring because it was like, yeah. like it lasted a little too long. But outside of that, I thought it was a really good movie. Really, really good movie. The buckets of blood. Five out of five. Fucking the gore in this movie, so great. I <laughs> mean, like, there's this, there's, like, sometimes you don't see the, like, when it happens, but the after effects are really good. Like, there's this one chick who gets attacked, and you just see the after effects, and her entire right side of her cheek is just ripped open and ripped out, and it's just, like, shreds of skin still there. And I was like, oh, my God. And then the same time, like, when this one dude gets his head blown off, just the blood that gleeks everywhere is just really good just like everywhere. and there's this other scene like so the mom the mom who lost her kids in this movie she's such a badass like there's this scene where she just fucking goes ape shit on this horde of zombies with her machete and she's just swinging it and killing zombies everywhere there's blood squirting everywhere and it's fucking great you're just like yeah i'm gonna have to check that's right out. Yeah, I'll I, you, I, you'll love the blood in it. <laughs> you so, know me. So, yeah, uh, definitely, definitely give this movie a good watch, especially if you need another take on zombies, because, like I said, it's, it's like they're zombies, but not. Like, they're smarter. They actually can think. And I also like the fact that they don't go into super deep detail about everything because, like, it really puts you in the shoes of the survivors. And that's one thing that I feel like a lot of zombie movies don't do. Like, some, they always end up finding some kind of government person or someone that knows what's going on and stuff. And in this one, I feel like they put it in more of a real-world setting of, like, you know what, I don't even care where they came from, what started this, whatsoever. I want to live. And so I'm just going to try and live. Instead of figure this out, I'm just going to survive. And I like that a lot. Definitely recommend it. Of course, you can find this on Netflix because yeah. it's a Netflix original. Um, so you will need a Netflix account uh, Netflix account, or borrow someone else's Netflix account. I mean, who honestly really pays for their Netflix? <laughs> Except for me. Oh, I, <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. yeah. But, like, check it out. Really, really good. There's only a couple trivia uh, trivia facts the film's premiere was at TIFF in Toronto in September 2017. At the end of the credits, there's a final shot of the chair tower with a, where a red parrot is perched on it. So there's their significance of it. Yep, that's all you get. No, I like. I actually kind of like that they don't go into the... Like, it, it's a bittersweet thing for me because like, I like that they didn't go into the significance of the chair altar. And I also like the fact that like because you are just following normal survivors normal people not like government agents or anything that want to get down to the bottom of this you know you're just following survivors that that's all you get is what they see yeah so i, I just think that was really good and i really liked it and like the ending is really really good except for the last like two seconds i guess is what almost kind of turned me sour on it because they it was shoehorned in in my opinion but outside of that the fantastic gore really really good character development this was a very very good character development movie like they did such a good job like and they're and i also like that the, all the characters are smart in this movie like just one last thing like there's one person you meet that's art that has been quote unquote bit 
and you never know if she was truly bitten by a zombie or because she always says it's a dog. Yeah. And, but when you're first introduced to her, she's tied up because they're like, we have to tie her up and wait a few days to let her go because we don't know. Just to be sure. Yeah, they, they literally say, like, we have to be sure. And they question her, like, if you were bit, would you tell us? And she goes, no. I mean, yes, yes. So they're like, well, we have to tie. Now we have to leave you there because we don't know. Like, so I really like that because they, because in this, in the movie, they know that it takes a few days for the zombie virus to take a hold of you. Yeah. Um, depending on like where you got bit, of course. So like, I like that every single survivor was precautious in this movie and actually had a plan and was smart and didn't do, I don't think there was like too many stupid ideas in this movie. Like everyone is super cautious and I thought that was really rare. So when thing, when people died in it, it's because shit got too out of hand. You know, yeah. like it, it was good. It's good. I highly recommend it. Well, so I'm going to have to check it out, my man. Yeah. Yeah, I probably will. I did it with Invictus, and I already saw The Perfection, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, I already saw your movie. Yeah. So, and it's fucking great, too. So, Such a um, good movie. What, this movie I'm jumping into, so, again, mine was strictly from Shudder, so you're only going to be able to find this on Shudder. I'm telling you this right now. But... Uh, keep in mind, Shutter is like five bucks at the time of this recording. So if you have an Amazon yeah. Prime account and you're already paying for like HBO Max and Disney Plus and all that shit, it what is five more dollars onto an Amazon Prime account? <laughs> you're paying yeah. like fifteen on Netflix. So I, I don't want to hear that shit of I can't afford it. We'll fucking cancel something. Like, <laughs> yeah, uh, you'll save ten dollars. Like, are you really happy with that Disney Plus subscription? Let's be honest. <laughs> I am. Well, some one of us is. <laughs> I just watch Gravity Falls on repeat right now. <laughs> then what's the point? I don't know. <laughs> Clone Wars, once I get to it? I'm already finished with Clone Wars. Point being, <laughs> coming back to it. So Mayhem is what I decided to do. It's a 2017 film, um, and it is a fucking awesome, ultra-violent, gory ride into the fear the, the just the frustration and anger we have all the time so, it's what the belco experiment should have been it's, it's it's even though i will say the belco experiment is a really really good movie yeah we might do that on, i might do that on here but mayhem is definitely the better out of the two yeah it's also probably one of the few films that we'll ever get to a close uh, as close as we'll ever get to a live action crossed movie so they're never gonna do it man. i know they're not they're not it's, gonna I, well, you know what i don't think they might do a series dude they already tried they already tried like doing go fund me for like just even a series for just like one of the one-off comics that they did <laughs> it did not go well i'm really upset about it but you got give it time we're in an apocalypse now anything is possible right you know, yeah. <laughs> um so jumping into it um directed by John Lynch, written by Matthias Caruso, stars Stephen Yoon of Walking Dead fame, Samara yeah. Weaving, the amazing Samara Weaving. I mean, what have you not seen her in already? The Babysitter, uh, Ready or Not. And she's going to be in the new Bill and Ted movie. So, <laughs> yeah. So it's it's fantastic. Uh, so she's awesome, and also stars Stephen Brand. Um, and is about a virus that spreads through an office complex, causing white collar workers to act out the worst impulses. It's really hard to fuck <laughs> up the sy synopsis for this one. So. Uh, Bravo, everybody. Mm -hmm. Just starting out, man, it's Steven, it's Steven Yoon, and he's fantastic, man. I mean, you, if you loved him in Walking Dead, you're going to love him in this. He's definitely a different character, and it's just the role he plays just fits with him. Like, he's... he's uh, He's just a guy who has ambitions to be a higher up in a business, in a corporation, and be one law of, firm. Yeah, in he a law, law firm. He wants to be a head lawyer. Yeah, he wants whatever the head he, lawyer. He is. wants to be partner. All, yeah, partner. He wants That's to make partner. Yeah. He wants to be all the way at the top. So he's. He, you know, he works hard. He actually has compassion for the people that he works with. I mean, we see it early see, on. We see it a little bit well, in the beginning. Well, so you see him basically starting oh, out. Wait, yeah, so yeah. What never we mind. See, we, I'm sorry. No, I'm yeah, too ahead so, of myself. So basically, we see him start out as, you know, a hopeful upstart wanting to get a make partner at this law firm. And so, you know, he... It shows how he first starts out with just, you know, doing desk job and whatnot and, and yeah. not really getting much, you know, recognition or anything. And so, you know, he's he's the awkward guy in, in the in the elevator with all the other suits who's just, like, hopeful on the mm -hmm. first day no one's paying him mind or anything. Yeah. Eventually, some time passes and we see how he slowly becomes more like them, mm -hmm. um, where he's eventually in that elevator with his headphones in, in a suit, not really paying attention to the new people around him. Yeah. And just, like, just like it's an inconvenience to him. Yeah. That kind of thing. And so he makes it to his floor, and he still has a little bit of his humanity left within him, where there's an assistant who's just getting berated, 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 berated 
by this guy and just like it's so it's such a gross scene that Steven Yeun basically his character who by the way he's playing the role of Derek Cho comes up to the guy and is just like hey man how about you know you cut the shit out or I release this video of you you know having this girl go down on you last Christmas party to you and your wife <laughs> I'm sure she would love to see that kind of that type of move to get yeah. him to back off to yeah it's blackmail <laughs> yeah basically and so he does and then you see him also kind of treat his assistant a little bit like shit. So we keep seeing this, like, back and forth of, like, he still has his, like, humanity, yeah. but he's slowly becoming, well, a total suited asshole. Yeah. You know, he's becoming the thing that he doesn't, you know, realize that he doesn't want to be, you know? It's, yeah. You know, having to explain that he's not going to make, make it to his sister's kid's birthday again, you know, because he'd rather be at work. And, yeah. you know, and he's flipping out, like, where is my mug? Where is my mug? Where is my goddamn mug? Mm -hmm. You know? Like, it's the one thing he keeps to himself, his own little personal thing. Yeah. And so, um, you know, eventually we get introduced to Caroline. Uh, uh, uh role playing the role of Kara, the Siren Powell. And so she's, she's the one that's, like, in the ear of their body who's played by Stephen Brand, literally plays John the Boss Towers. And so she's, you know, she's manipulative. She's on the roll to be... Yeah. She wants to be partnered just as bad as mm -hmm. uh, Derek does. And so, you know, she took his mug to, like, irk at him and just, like, get him to snap so that way he looks, like, less of a candidate. Mm -hmm. And so... You know, some time passes from that scene, and um, Derek basically has to settle this case that he has with Melanie Cross, who's played by the Amer amazing Samara Weaving, um, who basically she's trying to get an extend on the loan for her dad's house yeah. so they can actually live there and Derek's like we've already given you a few extensions we can't keep doing that and so he's basically having to play the role of bad guy and tell her that yeah. you know you're shit out of luck we're gonna yeah. take your dad's home yeah. um, and so she immediately wants to punch his fucking face off <laughs> the whole scene in general though is great because this whole movie relies on the chemistry between Steven Yeun and Samara Weaving and mm -hmm. they do fantastic oh they're great other. so so great I want to see Steven Yeun in so many more things. Yeah, coming back to it. So, some time passes a little after this, and then you start to see news reports of this virus finally taking over. Which, by the way, at the beginning of the film, it starts off with Steven Yeun talking about how the virus happened and yeah. where it started. It, he actually talks about the patient zero, where it began with. Mm -hmm. And I didn't talk about it because I don't want to give it away because it's really cool. And I think, and you're, and even though it's not really a spoiler because it happens literally in the beginning, I still think it, it's worth the watch on its own. Just yeah, to see you need how, to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> you need to see how they do the shot because it's it, although it's kind of a cliched shot it's it it's very appropriate for how they're sitting up the rest of the movie well anyways as you know eventually the virus starts to outbreak within his building mm -hmm. this is happening at the same time that he's being let go and being fired <laughs> yeah, due to he got blackmailed yeah because due to manipulation from a uh, Kara the siren pal yeah and so he gets taken to like this weird jail cell that the corporation has it's not even a jail cell it's just like the maintenance room yeah and in uh, the, the parking lot yeah it's like the basement or the parking <laughs> lot yeah. yeah and so what I loved about this scene is that so Samara Weaving she's playing as Melanie Cross right and Melanie Cross comes off the character who's like the very she, like she's supposed to come off as like very fragile listens to like you know yeah. poppy music type of deal and like, she comes off that way so he eventually wakes up from being taken out and taken, you know, uh, being knocked out and brought down to the basement level where mm -hmm. she was also uh, kept because she created a scene at the corporation too. Yeah. And so, like, he just wakes up to her and she's just, like, pacing back and forth, headphones in, blaring, like, the most brutal death metal you can imagine. Black Dahlia. Like, probably, yeah, it could be Black Dahlia. <laughs> it uh, is. Oh, it is Black Dahlia? Yeah. Fuck yeah. So she's listening to Black Dahlia Murder. And so you're just like, all right, I already like her. <laughs> I already like her. And so, like, there's this, like, small moment where he's like, I didn't expect you to listen to and he's like she's like what you don't expect me to listen to metal what did you think i would expect you expect me to listen to <laughs> yeah, like, i'm just like yourself. i'm like you get a girlfriend fuck yeah <laughs> <laughs> like like just because they don't just because we don't always dress in black doesn't mean we don't like the metal yeah i know i actually like the fact that she ends up wearing a black dolly murder shirt and everything in the movie too. <laughs> yeah <laughs> she's like fucking i'm owning it and like Yes. Because it's Black Dolly Murder. Samara Weaving, you're my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, the guys that, you know, capture the bodyguard security come back and they're infected at this point. The virus mm -hmm. is now making them want to act out their own stuff. And so so Derek and Melanie have to fight back. And yeah. and so I'm com I'm kind of going over a few scenes, just kind of skipping them. Because you're mostly seeing them just starting to finally 
get their shit together. They do the whole Batman suit up scene where they're like putting on like <laughs> tool. Keep in mind. There's a maintenance, like... Yeah, it's a maintenance logger. Yeah, so they have, like, you know, they have access to tools and whatnot. So, like, Melanie has a nail gun and Derek has, like, a hammer. And, like, they're Mm -hmm. just ready to go, man. And so they start making their way up this tower, getting closer and closer to John. And, you know, the way they start working together, Derek's like, hey, you want that extension? You help me get to the top and take out the fuckers that that put us both here? And I will help you get that extension. Yeah. Because he's like, I have half my right in this company, too. Mm-hmm. And I'm willing to help you if you're willing to help me kind of deal. Yeah. And so they start making their way up. And so what begins is just a glorious scene I've ever seen of just, like, carnage, destruction, <laughs> and debauchery. So keep in mind, this people, virus... People are going ape shit in the background. There's people fucking in the background. Yeah. There's other people just punching each other in the face. There's one chick... <laughs> I laugh so hard at her. She's literally going insane and just grabbing papers and going, meh, meh. <laughs> like in the back yeah, of Yeah, and like people are just being great. thrown off like, you know, ledges. It's nuts, man. It's, it's totally so crazy weird. and it's so fucking awesome. And by the way, the humor in this movie is fantastic because it's mm-hmm. very tongue-in-cheek, dark humor. And it's just, it's, I love it. Like, it, it fits perfectly the for the one type. one-lines and quips in this movie Yeah, the one-lines and the quips are great. Derek, the character who's just been like holding on to all his frustration and his anger who's now finally able to let it all out and it's just like beating the shit out of anyone who gets in his way where <laughs> Melanie is just so mad at what this corporation has done to her and her father just like yeah. the pure anger like there's a scene even where like there's a group of office workers on one side and him and you know Melanie on the other and they're like all right, let's fucking do this. Yeah, this is going to happen. <laughs> so, like, turns to this brittle, brutal killing spree. And, like, honestly, like, I don't want to give away the whole scene because, like, it's just so choreographed so well and it's over the top that I love it. Which, by the way, if I'm going to give this movie a uh, Buckets of Gore rating, it's definitely a solid four and a half out of five. <laughs> and, you know, and the reason here, the reason why is because it, there isn't complete over the top, like, decapitations or anything like that. Yeah. But the blood and the violence and the carnage and how well it is used and choreographed in each scene warrants a four, uh, four and a half out of five. Mm-hmm. So I would give it the full five if it wasn't for that. But other than that, uh, fantastic throughout. Um, as they're making their way up, you know, they're talking more, a little bit more about their history and what they've been through. But you also see Stephen Brand's character as the boss start to slowly lose his shit. You know, oh and, my god, but, and, dude, he's my favorite he, bad guy. Yeah, like Just he's trying fan. to keep it. Like he's trying to keep it together. <laughs> as he's doing mounds of coke and when no one's looking. Yeah. And so like, <laughs> and, and, and as the more as the virus goes on, the more he's just doing coke while everybody's looking. And so, and so he he you know is eventually like you know he's like I have all the power here you know I know yeah. I, I, I I can do whatever I want kill those fuckers kind of deal. <laughs> well, like, there's one scene doesn't he do a line as he's screaming at the CDC people? Yeah. <laughs> like and he does a line in front of them and everyone's like do you just do a line of coke in front of the cops? Yeah. <laughs> like on a TV? Yeah. And they even kind of like call it out a little bit. Yeah. And that's what I love about it. And so as this keeps going on, you know, uh, there's a point where like John's trying to like intimidate Derek and get him to stop mm. and whatnot, keep him from moving up. And so Derek replies to the video. And in the back, and this, we can actually just talk about this trip. Yeah, because this is going to be a fun fact. So in the back, say. there's carnage <laughs> happening and there's like two people fucking. And he's just like, <laughs> he and just he's, has he, her bent over a bit, uh, over a desk and just going at it yeah and Derek's just like the whole video is like I'm coming for you fucker and you're not gonna stop me mm-hmm. but like you pointed out <laughs> yeah. the couple fucking were actually <laughs> fucking second sex on, st- on the set yeah so that was it's so great legit recorded like, fucking well what's so funny too about that is like because they're actually having sex they're the most calm if you notice out of everything, they're literally just like, yeah, doggy. <laughs> yeah. Well, everyone else is just, there's this one dude literally just punching another person in the face behind them. The chick going, meh, meh, with the papers are back there. And then yeah. they're just super chill, like fucking on a desk. Look, man, respect to them. Because I know, <laughs> because you told me they're actually a couple too. Yeah, like, they're in, actually in a relationship during the movie. So. Oh, yeah. So respect yeah. to them, man. They saw the opportunity, they went for it. Yeah, they're like, we're going to be immortalized. <laughs> <laughs> and you are. <laughs> Um, so uh, uh, after some time at that point as they're making their way up this corporate tower metaphorically and literally there's a scene where they try to turn them together trying to turn Derek and Melanie together uh, with Carrie Fox playing as Irene Smith as she tries to say 
hey, we'll give you that partnership, Derek. Uh, mm-hmm. Just let leave her here and say no to her, basically. Let like, us have di- her. Yeah, there's more to it than that, but that's basically what it is. And so... You, at this point, like, you think that they actually do kind of, like, go against each other, but they figure out a way to come out of this situation, mm-hmm. both alive, and it's really genius. And you'll... And I don't want to give it away. No, it's, it's good. But it's a great, like, bonding character-building moment for both of them. As they're making their way up more and more, um, again, they, it just, like, the carnage keeps continuing. You know, John is just losing more, more, more of his shit, and it's just fucking just awesome throughout the entire entirety of it but as they're getting up there they're starting to question more why they're even doing it like mm-hmm. does it really matter to them does it even matter to Derek becoming a partner you know especially in a company like this mm-hmm. and so and I'm not going to give away the ending because the ending is worth the investment as well it's uh, a twist it's really it's but it's, good. A, it's a good fucking twist and is and is one that it's definitely apparent for today's team the age and time yeah um, so yeah as he's getting up there you know they finally you know fight their final bosses in this whole thing you know can't literally mm-hmm. Going up this tower where Melanie takes on Kara, I believe, if I remember right. Yeah, she takes on Kara, and it's like fucking a brutal fight, man. Like, just beats the living shit out of Kara. <laughs> like, it's so fucking, like, you're just like, yeah! Because, uh, and Fuck shout, that bitch! <laughs> and again, credit to Caroline uh, Ch- Ch- Chikese, who did a fantastic job as Kara. Like, she did such a good job that you were so happy when Kara finally got killed off. Because she was <laughs> such a bastard in the movie. She really, she really is. is. She really was. <laughs> so Holy she crap. Sucked. Oh, she's the worst. That's it. The, the fucking, the, peop- the actors in this movie were great. You yeah. can tell they, they are like, just own what you wanted, how you think this actor would be. Oh, yeah. They, and they're just like, we're going to fucking turn yeah, it to 11. It was fucking amazing. <laughs> um, and as eventually, you know, eventually Derek does get to John and kills his boss. You yeah. know, no spoiler there. Um, yeah, you, you kinda, you, it's pretty obvious. We're, we're wrapped up with the movie of, you know, Melanie getting what she wanted the entire time just for her dad to be okay and not worry, yeah. about, worry about is losing his home and Derek gets what he wants to mm-hmm. not in the way that we expect it but in a way that is so fitting for the story yeah. um, and although all my review makes it seem like this movie doesn't have a lot of depth to it which sure I will say that's probably one con is that it's not like a very serious character driven movie it's definitely more so like they learn their own like they learn who they are throughout the carnage within themselves and whatnot yeah. So it's it's you know, but that's also the point is that it's an in your face, carnage filled, violent, funny ass movie that mm-hmm. is just worth your time. Um, and especially now with again with everything that's just happening in the world, there's so many things and you know influences and themes of this movie that hit right at home right now. Mm-hmm. Um, Mayhem is just an hour and a half long. It is worth your time, and it's one of the few movies that you're gonna watch and walk away from and be like, wow holy shit, I can't wait to actually talk about this with someone yeah. because there's so many over-the-top, cool, crazy, fucking ridiculous scenes. And again, just fucking Black Dolly and Murder. So if you know I mean, always, this, this movie gives me an excuse to talk about more about Samara Weaving, so... <laughs> um, so obviously, if you want to watch uh, Mayhem, you need a Shutter account, which again, I'm going to encourage any horror fan, especially if you are the horror fan that has been let down by Tubi, to go check out Shutter. Like, it is worth your time. It's only five mm-hmm. bucks, maybe six at most. Uh, depending where you are and uh, it's worth your time uh, mayhem you can find it there a few interesting facts so obviously we, we already talked about the employees that actually did have sex um, <laughs> but <laughs> around the one hour mark when Melanie uh, Samara Weaving takes off her top she reveals that metal shirt that we mentioned earlier uh, by the death metal band Black Dolly Murder with the cover art from the Nocturnal album which is a fantastic album mm-hmm. um, director Joe Lynch is a fan of heavy metal which is audible and visible in most of his movies I l- love you Joe. <laughs> At one point where when there is a close up on Derek, the blood on his forehead spells ID clearly. A reference for the fact that the ID7 virus causes you to be driven by pure ID, which that's what is called in this movie is mm-hmm. the ID7 virus. The last one I'm going to point out is Dallas Roberts and Stephen Yoon both starred in The Walking Dead in 2010 as Milton, Mamet, and obviously Glenn. Uh, the conversation between Derek and Melanie about the Dave Matthews band wasn't even in the original script. <laughs> I Matt love that. It was probably improvised on the spot. Yeah, that's... Joe Lynch was like, yeah, fuck Dave Matthews. <laughs> <laughs> fuck Dave Matthews. <laughs> that's awesome. So, yeah, um, 
these are the movies that we're telling you to check out. Ghouls, Gals, Coombs, yeah. Mans. You got your crazy carnage and the off-the-wall awesome funny movie and your super hardcore character-driven movie. <laughs> yeah. So you have choices. You check them out. Yeah. Again, if... if I really am going to heavily uh, advocate one more time for Shudder here. I honestly feel like Shudder gets shit on a lot because there's so many people that don't really try it. They just, like, watch one movie that they don't get or, like, can't finish one because it's not their interest, and then they write off the whole streaming service. The fact of the matter is that Shudder has a lot yeah. of content when it comes to horror, and you have to have an open mind to it. Like, if you, it's definitely for the horror fan that way you like you just like picking a movie and just going into it seeing what it's like because you've already seen so many other things that are so similar and you're aware that you might watch something that's similar or you might not be impressed but you also might be impressed and find something new that's who shutter is for it's yeah. just the actual like legit horror fan just check it out like it's worth your time again it's Plus, five bucks it has the new iteration of creep show on there yeah, and also shout out to like uh, lala as well lala and gigi actually got a Shutter account when they started did hosting the Half Hour of Power a little afterwards. Nice. And, like, they're happy that they did it, too. Yeah. So, because I, I sold them on it, and so... Yeah, man, Shudder's great. I don't know why it gets so much hate on. Like, it has great content, great movies, like... Yeah. We are not sponsored by Shudder. We just genuinely enjoy their service. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> we just want to say that again. Ghouls, scouts, creeps, and mutants alike, thank you again so much for supporting us and supporting the show. You're, everything you do means the world to us. A shout out to all of our patrons for continuing to support the show. Seriously, I know we, we go on moments where we thank you repu profusely and then we forget to do so. And it's never on purpose. It's literally my ADHD just acting up within that moment. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, all of you patrons. You mean the world to us. And all of our other fans, too, that also just spread our content, talk about us, and listen to us. We love the shit out of all of you. Mm -hmm. Don't get it twisted. We love every single one of you so much. Your, your support means the absolute world to us. Keeps us going. If you want to keep up with everything we're doing, you know where to go. Facebook, search us up, Punk Rock Horror Podcast, or on our Twitter, at official PRHP, or... On Instagram, Punk Rock Horror Podcast, hashtag PRHP Podcast. If you do want to support the show financially, you can go over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash Punk Rock Horror Podcast. And even for just $2 a month, we'll get access to content before anyone else and just a lot of other bonus rewards there and also the fact that if you sign up for our $8 one you will not only just get 50% discount that is exclusive to you on all merch access to content before anyone else you will also get a chance to well you won't get a chance but you will get a mystery box that is personalized decorated and painted exclusively for you we'll have little goodies on the inside of it along with a mystery horror film that we recently reviewed on the podcast and also a thank you letter directed towards you personalized from us and signed um ghouls gals creeps and mutants if you want to support us by buying merch we have a new shirt out it's cody zilla you can't, <laughs> you, you can't miss it it's over on teespring.com slash punk record podcast get that now get on top of that fuck um, that duck fuck that duck <laughs> and ghouls gals creeps and mutants like thank you again for listening to another episode of punk rock horror podcast and we will talk about horror with you next time bye bye